Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Robert Falcon Let down here in Central Park. Uh, we've had a lot of issues uh, related to safety in the city of Winnipeg, and uh, there was a call uh, by a parent of a, of a young man who uh, unfortunately had a, you know, police would often describe as an incident, but often, well, it's actually a really a crime, and uh, a disgusting crime at that, uh, where he had his face slashed, and, uh, you know, called out to you know, local politicians, uh, federal, provincial, to actually do something about it. And, uh, you know, a call and a challenge for uh, our politicians to actually come down to Central Park. And so here I am uh, with the local citizens. Obviously, you know, you look around and there's a good sense of community. There's people here and, you know, I even have a, you know, uh, another person, citizen here. And uh, I'll just, why don't we have a quick conversation? How, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. What's your name? My name is Tracy. Tracy, how long, you live around here? I do you live around here, but maybe like 20 minutes away. Oh, 20 minutes. You walk here? I walk here. Why do you come down to this park? I come down to this park for my son to play around here, as you can see, the playground here. The playground behind us, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so I bring my son down here to play with other kids, and I guess that's pretty much it. I meet other people that I know. Is, is this a, for you, is this a safe or a dangerous um, place? I don't find it a safe place to, to hang around here as much maybe like in the evening. During the day it's okay, but when it gets a little darker, like in the evening, it gets kind of like crazy or yeah, yeah. not safe for like little kids or women especially. Yeah. So it's kind of scary. I wouldn't hang around here or walk around here. At so what time would you go home? Uh, I would say about like eight. Yeah, we're getting seven close to eight right now. Eight, yeah. se seven, eight o'clock. Lovely. <laughs> Well, anyways, we're here putting up a teepee, you know, uh, maybe you'll come by tomorrow morning and see if sure. I'm still here. Yeah, hopefully you're you're all in good hands tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have the Bear uh, Clan coming to, uh, you know, uh, offer a little bit of support. They're a group that actually does a lot of patrols in the neighborhood as well, making the streets safer. That's good. And uh, we are putting up a teepee, and I have Winston Watney, an elder, helping us put up a teepee, and some people that have just stopped by want to help put up a teepee for the very first That's time. That's good. Anyway, so uh, I guess uh, on with the teepee uh, putting up. Well, keep putting up that TV. <laughs> I'm yourself. sleeping here tonight. Well, that's good. Yeah. Keep warm. Well, you know, I got a sleeping bag and an air mattress. That's good. Comfortable. Okay, we're ready to keep going. Okay, right. we'll pick you up there, Robert. Yeah, keep going. And then we'll put this up. Maybe five seconds video. Five seconds video.
in my car. Facebook Live, do you have anything you want to say to people as they're watching? Oh, so when you're setting up a teepee, make sure that you got lots of time and just take it easy because it's nice and calm right now. But if you take it easy, it'll be nice and breezy. And we'll have lots of fun when it's all done. <laughs>
My understanding, daughter's gonna sleep overnight here, yeah? Okay, like, you just himself. Wow! Can you show him from far? Can you show him from far here? Can you show him? Um, don't be close up to him. There will be an air mattress. There will be an air mattress. Can you show him from here? Show him from here. Let's go. Show me how to use them. Put them underwater and they swim. How are you doing, man? Are you sure? It's pretty dangerous. Be sure. Oh. Uh, here. Uh, here. Yeah. Uh, here. Uh, here. 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 Brand new, I see. Two of them. Oh, my God. 
Sir, I think it's not. You said too long, right? Yeah, we're going to go around yeah. this uh, Yeah, we're going to find a hammer and we'll hammer it in. Margaret? Yeah. I think it's better when we come. Maybe you should be the one doing that for your... Oh, it's all circle. It has to be tight, yeah? Yeah, tight. Yeah, I put the wash on the Okay. No, no, don't do it. Don't start over there. No. Do this over there. And make sure that they're all. Hey, can I have a selfie? Can I have a no, selfie hey, with the guy? No, no, no. Because, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Ready to sleep? <laughs>
Why don't you go have a look? People are singing in the park. Hey, how are you, brother? Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna. Cool. Yeah, we're gonna. We're getting there. A little bit by a little bit. Good day, sir. Hey. They have foyer, huh? Nice. 
sing the song. Yeah. Yeah. Come to bless you. We hope you make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I come right into here tonight, I'll come and check on you. Thank you. Hey. Sure. That's my family here. Is it? Yeah. Cool. Like, ah. time. Hey, hello, hello. Yeah, we're going to do a set. I keep you setting too in a couple days, but uh, Barbara knows. Okay, cool. I don't know where they're setting theirs up. No? no. Probably down at the What's Barbara? Most likely, What's yeah. What's Barbara's last name? Libana. Yeah, that is a shot, so I've got to call it more and see what's happening. Good, very nice. Brand new? How much? Really? TB Joe. Yes. Gotta love TB Joe from Red Pheasant First Nation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was $5,900. Yeah. Five thousand and nine hundred dollars. How are you doing? That's a lot of money, man. It's worth it. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Good, thank you. These come parts, they're Oh, five days ago, where from? Yeah. Syria. Syria. Uh, Anna Ishmael and Robert talking at. Uh, Anna Ishmael. Ishmael. Uh, uh, Man, uh, Canada, Burlam Man. Burlam Man? Burlam Man. Yeah, you too. Have a really good night. Yeah. They're making a live.
so we're doing a, right now we're doing a Facebook Live event uh, because we there's been a lot of violence in Central Park. Uh, perhaps uh, some of the reasons you're here you know, to offer you know, beautiful music uh, to lift up people's spirits. And so I've come down here because there's a challenge put out to po politicians to you know spend a night in uh, Central Park. And so I've you know taken that challenge. I brought my teepee down here, an elder, uh, you know, some uh, friends, and, and here I find you. And so who who are you? And what, what are you doing? A group mostly, I guess most likely would be from Arbor, Manitoba. There's a couple other churches around here that we affiliate with. And we try, we come to the city a couple times a year usually and sing here in the park at Portage Place. Sometimes at some other old folks' homes. Um, yeah. Cool. So how many churches are comprised? Uh, we'd be, I guess we would have four churches represented here today. Four churches. Can I sing along? Sure. I have a I have a degree of music, so I'd love to sing. If, I, if you yeah. if you have a book, I can share. That's, uh... well, okay, thanks. I'll sing in the back for the gentleman. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Thank you. 
That was very beautiful. Thank you. And we also have a good friend, uh, Jim Bell from uh, Silo Mission, who just showed up. Hey, Jim. Hi there. Hey, how are you Come doing? Come on down, there? Jim. Hi. <laughs> the song that we're going to sing today. It's one of our oldest songs, and what it says is, uh, from where you are sitting up above, we call him Creator. We all know Tawinan, we call him the Father of all creation. We call him the Creator. So don't get mad when you say that, the Creator. That's who you're talking about, too. You believe me? <laughs> all right, then, here we go. Oh.
Ja, 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 We are the first people here. This is the land that we walked on, our grandfathers, our grandmothers, all our people. It was beautiful at that time, and it's beautiful even now. There is so much to see all over this great Canada. You many, many people have come here to this land. Many people, even those that would call people murderers, they come here too. And there's room for them too. But many people have come here, and these people now are welcome here. They live here. And they sing here, Father. I ask you in a humble way to be with us all here as we gather together on this sacred land and we sing our songs, Father. Only you know everything. Us, we don't know anything. So we beg for your love and your pity on all of us, Father. Hey! Hey! Mama! Mama, this morning, uh, Pat, can I give you uh, money? I uh, hope to see you again. When's the next time you come back? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. So just cut. Uh, can you see us? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So what's your name? Johnny. And you go to Tech Box. So how old are you? 17. You live in the neighborhood around here? No. Where do you live? Oh, the West End. So that you come plus. Well, kind of not too far away. So what brought you here? I can't let you try it, unfortunately, right now. But I have a quick question for you. So, are you afraid to be in this neighborhood? No. It's not the United States. It's actually, I know it's the most densely populated neighborhood. Yeah. And that's what makes it really nice. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of people are quite afraid. Like, they've been, you know, like, it's been in the news a lot. And so I'm, you know, like, I've come down here. There was a challenge put out to politicians to come down here. And I'm, you know, so I said, okay, let me bring, come down here and put up my TV and see what it's like. And, you know, so far I've been down here and I, you know, it's been quite nice. And I'll put up the TV. And I've had a lot of help and a lot of, wow, look at this. How much are we eating? I was going to order Tim Hortons. <laughs> Hey, you brought food down. Yes, yes. 
So anyways, it's a pleasure meeting you. Anyways, good luck with your exercise. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Honored. Yeah. Hey, it was, it was great. great to meet you. And then uh, if you give me five minutes, two minutes, I will give you one second. Okay. I came to your office. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was in there all the time. That's not you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's up off. No, it's still on. It's still recording, but uh, you know the lights a little bit. We back up a little bit more. When it's done, maybe I'll talk to you. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, maybe in an hour or something. Like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. God bless. I'm here to help. I'm here. Okay, you live in Nigeria. I would probably be a follower. I know we would love to run an extension for you. No, no, I have no So I'm not taking a shot at him. It's just the way I see it. Well, just let me do an interview with Jim. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. If you have issues, like I have to write it down and all that, and then I have to. No, 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 we'll make appointments. Okay, perfect. Is it okay there, Robert? My kid was from the West End. I wish I should have heard more. I'm from the West End. <laughs> or I was. Happy hey, Winston, thanks. Daniel Macker, he was tech block guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's see, how does it look? Oh yeah, you can still see Jim pretty good. That's pretty good. Hey, Jim. I got chairs, by the way, as well. Good. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know this area very well, Knox United Church, oh my life, I used to spend a lot of time down this way. Well, uh, you know, here we are in Central Park, I yes. guess you've, you've heard that people are afraid to come down to Central Park. Well, it's thriving tonight, isn't it? Yeah, quite a few people, yeah. A lot of things going on here tonight, and it uh, looks like there's a lot of youth out there playing soccer, or playing games, or parents and whatnot, some great singing that was going on here before. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it was actually a, a community, uh, I, I suppose they're Mennonites. I, I don't know, I just walked up, the I got out of my from car. From the Interlakes uh, <laughs> denomination. Uh, so they were out singing and they come down about four times a year to sing well they sounded i got out of the car and walking over here it was a beautiful sound of my yeah. ear i'll say that and i was allowed to sing with them they let me sing along. all right well you sounded pretty good to me <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much i had a good drum you know yeah, like you did? yeah so um you know like a lot of the conversation we're having actually is related to you know like the safety in the city mm -hmm. and i know you're doing a lot of work uh, with other partners like salvation army and yep. main street mm -hmm. and salam is obviously very important uh, working with the homeless population mm -hmm. You know how are how are you trying to make the city a better place for more citizens? How are you trying to make like really make, make a dent in what people you know like some people in the suburbs say? Oh, they don't even want to come downtown because they're afraid. And, and what would you say to them? And what what are you doing to make a difference? Well, I would say I used to subscribe to that. I would say going back 20 months ago, I uh, I might have subscribed to that same theory. But now that I've been at Siloam for about 20 months, I see the area is safe. I see I. I regularly communicate with people in and around the area that are making their way whether they're working in the area whether they're coming into our building utilizing services but in terms of what we are trying to do to your question i think uh, a word that we use often is we're trying to be collaborative with uh, other agencies okay. and levels of government yeah. uh, with issues at hand and uh, one recent one that uh, has arisen in the last uh, several weeks last couple of months is seeing the whole panhandling issue and seeing what we can do around that we're really around safety yeah. safety on the streets but other initiatives that are that are largely collaborative we, as you know we're trying to do things about uh, battling homelessness with um, you know people that are uh, facing challenges around homelessness whether that be with uh, addictions or yeah. mental illness uh, mental wellness those types of things so we are I would safely say that we're doing a lot of work uh, internally and with other with other partners other agencies right now including government offices to see what we can do together to try to make uh, inroads in these areas, these challenges that we face. So we're excited about it. We have much to learn. You've been working quite a bit with the city as well. We have. We've been working with the city, um, absolutely, with uh, with the councillors going back several months, with, with Mayor Bowman, and certainly with, with your office. Yeah, and, and yeah also, we've been trying to get to, uh, trying to ac access yeah. those funds from the federal government. And, Billions are being poured into it. And we, and we are doing a homework. We look forward to taking the next steps. And I must say, in working with the provincial government as well, and so the thing that it's like excites me and excites us back at our offices I think that there is a real level of engagement amongst all of us to listen and to learn 
but not only that, but we're we're looking forward now to taking the next action steps together. Okay. Yeah, that's so we're we're getting roll that out, and I'll be speaking to you soon about uh, some of those uh, some of those things. <laughs> you you want some you want the funding? You need help. Well, we, we we need the funding, but uh, obviously we want to be in alignment with um, uh, what your office and what uh, hi there, and with uh, we're doing an interview on <laughs> on TV. <laughs> So you can watch us. If you have a cell phone, you can probably go find us on Facebook. He looks like a TV star. Yeah, he looks like, like a TV star. Like be, yeah. <laughs> working so, hard, running around. So we're doing a lot of work in addition to the, uh, you know, the everyday services that we try to offer at Siloam around the, you know, about the nourishing meals and our shelter tonight will be full. Our transition services, the other thing that we're we're focused on is transitioning and helping so, people progress. So the shelter tonight is actually full? It will be. I, I don't know the numbers until tomorrow morning, but it is largely full every night. So, um, really, so like that's this thing a lot of people assume it, it comes full around winter time. That people will be under the bridges, they'll be out in the parks, that uh, they'll be out and they're, they're doing other in areas, other areas of the city, and all of a sudden in the winter, you know, kind of dies down and everyone's inside the shelter but you're saying that it's constant all year long it's constant uh, granted when we hit the cold weather we will turn away more people and that's where the relationships with other agencies are so key yeah. you mentioned salvation army mainstream project uh, we're, we're fortunate to be able to have those types of relationships with agencies like that and granted yes that uh, we will have a waiting list of 30 maybe even 40 people in those cold winter nights but on nights like tonight, we will be full, large and full. There might be the odd night where we're, our capacity is not quite at 110. Yeah. But safe to assume that most every night we, we are utilizing most, if not all, of our 110 beds on a beautiful September evening like this. It is a little It's It's sorry, it's it's sorry. A I, got, I got the long sleeves on tonight. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I put my suit and tie on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so really, what's it's like? So you mentioned mental health. Yeah. You know, how much is, of that is, do you think, a, a major issue that's facing a lot of the neighborhoods in the city? Not even, you know, sometimes we don't even, like, we talk, a lot of people, like, have, you know, uh, prejudice, how do you say that uh, in English? Uh, I spent too much time in, in Quebec when I was in the <laughs> Army. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the people prejudge sure. certain areas. Yeah. And they look at you know this in area and they say oh you know it's all you know all of the, everyone's mentally ill in these areas, mm -hmm. but really mental health issues actually affect not just you know downtown the oh, center uh, Central Park. It's not even just in the West End. You actually have people who have mental health issues right across the city no and pressure. in the countryside. It's wide. It's deeper and wider than I could have ever imagined. And as I become, I'm trying to uh, speed up my learning curve with respect to. Uh, mental illness. We are participating right now in in a mental uh, mental health research project yeah. that is being led by uh, implementation team out of Quebec, and we are we're extremely fortunate to be participating in that. But as I as I play catch up, if I could put it on that and try to learn more about the challenges around mental illness, it is a it is a huge challenge in our society, and Winnipeg is no exception. And it is something that uh, at Siloam that we are wanting to pay very close attention to as we go down the path of housing because we do know that those that face challenges with mental illness and are on the road to mental wellness we we see housing we see social enterprise and we see having the right support mechanisms in place to help people cope with those the spiritual care is a big one as well that now we're people who to pay to. now i i'm i'm not a psychologist me I'm neither psych no, i have no, i, I don't only want to comment but yeah you know often access to good mental care care i suspect in mental health is quite important yes. you know whether yeah. it's pharmaceutical or even uh, you know uh, you know just therapies and things like that mm -hmm. you know do people actually have good access to those types of therapies in our city have have we progressed enough to actually someone says you know I've got an illness I want it treated can they go and get the help that they need right away or does it take a little time to work its way through the system my understanding is there needs to be a greater emphasis by us, and when I say us, when I say that it's it's a collective us, whether it be levels of government agencies like Salem, others that are paying close attention to this, and it's more than a it's more than money. We know that money is a key key part of lending the supports yeah. to challenges like this, but there really needs to be that collaborative effort to establish the trust with those that are encountering challenges around mental illness, so that we can be in touch with it, form the right relationships, diagnose the right problem. I can tell you that just recently we've had meetings with experts and we are starting to get uh, a much greater appreciation and knowledge of the challenges in our community and we're looking forward to working with 
some of the professional agencies and I would say government agencies in our city and provinces, province so that we can truly make a difference. And we think by participating in a mental, uh, mental wellness research project that is oh, yeah. going to be intense over the course of the next few years, that I uh, work. Yeah, we're excited how, how about much, that. How much do you think, um, like often a lot of the issues, like I was talking, I was out doing actually some outreach mm -hmm. in, on Young Street, uh, yes. and just in the West Broadway, mm -hmm. and a lot of people mentioned uh, that they actually felt it was getting a little bit worse in the city with, you know, the meth mm -hmm. crisis that they were facing. You know, I guess other parts of the country, they're facing opioids, you know, in Vancouver, yeah. and, yeah. you know, that's really important as well. Yes. Uh, but you know, meth presents its own unique challenges. How much of that do you think is is related to people trying to essentially perhaps self-medicate? I am no expert in the area, but the best answer I can give you is when I say we've been meeting with experts in the field yeah. recently, going back even just a week ago. I would say, in my mind, the numbers are staggering. The numbers are absolutely staggering. That the issues that are starting to evolve as as a result of the meth, it's uh, it's quite it's a crisis. And I think when I'm going to go back and say to you that that's where, whether it be those that are working in the mental health field or the experts, but also the agencies and the levels of government, the, to me, what this is really going to need is a real collective impact so we can tackle this issue together. And in Winnipeg, it is an issue. It is yeah. an issue. Uh, well, I've been actually working with the federal government trying to, you know, uh, you know, you know, I still want people to talk about other addictions that people have. Yes. Uh, but I've been trying to get the federal government and our health minister. And I know she's been listening. You know, but it is a large and big machine. It is. And you know, Jeanette Patty Paw Taylor is a great lady from uh, New Brunswick. You know, very smart. I was on the finance committee with her, and I'm you know trying to convince her. You know, like let's talk about meth. Every time you come to Winnipeg, what are you doing for the meth crisis? What are you doing to actually address this issue? Well, you can hear people, you know, having a good yell behind us. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I'm, you know, now my, the parliamentary secretary to the health minister, uh, Canada's health minister, is uh, John Oliver, who's the MP from Oakville. Congratulations, John, on your, uh, you know, your appointment as the parliamentary secretary. He used to sit beside me. Okay. He sat beside me for three years. So I know a lot of the uh, things that John likes to do and what he likes to talk about. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, John and uh, Jeanette are both listening. And I hope they're kind of, you know, they kind of realize that this is a serious, serious issue here. Even behind us, actually, right now, there's actually people who are, are drinking. I don't know if you know that. I, I did not know that. Yeah, you know, it's uh, you know they you know they're yelling and having a, a pretty good time, but uh, you know they're also facing, I guess, probably some addiction issues related to alcohol. How much of alcohol is it another addiction issue? Oh, it's big. It, it, it's big. I would say that the, the, the people that do utilize the services that sell, when we talk about addiction, alcohol, of course, is a big one. But it's more under people kind of accept alcohol to a greater extent. I, I suppose. I suppose on the relative scale, and when you go back and talking about the meth issue before, that one is certainly that one is certainly the subject of the day, and for good reason, because the numbers uh, and across all demographics in, in youth, as well as more into mature adult age, the numbers that I was provided last week, and of course just a few weeks ago, I know that the uh, our police board and the Winnipeg police came out. And identified the problem from their perspective mm. as well. So this is something that I think that we all need to pay attention to. And I know at Siloma it is something that we want to be a partner with, as okay. we, because we do have people, and we have people that uh, that um, do come from a background of mental illness and mental wellness at Siloma. We're grateful to have them, but we also see that it's an area that is likely going to need some growth in the not too distant future, so that we can. Uh, do our part with all our other partners. So, I guess uh, I'm not asking. I'm not looking for criticism because we're trying to work in a collaborative yes, approach. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um, but you know, I have heard this area mentioned as being kind of a no-go zone after dark. That, well, lately, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, and I kind of, you know, it kind of concerns me because um, you know this is something that you might think about in a country like Iraq or Syria that you don't go in certain areas mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. you know people barricade themselves. You know the armed forces of the U.S. would barricade themselves in the green zone mm -hmm. and there would be no-go zones, you know, where a soldier would be unsafe. Sure. And I, and I kind of look at this and I wonder, like, you know, when you think of a, a law, order, and good government, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have law and order, mm -hmm. you know, how do you get good government? How do you have a functioning democracy where people can walk freely and have right. freedom of movement around right. their own city? Right. And the police, you know, I know and you know as well that they're actually working very hard. They they're stretched thin. Uh, Absolutely. They're working every day. It's not like they're slacking off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what can we do? 
Like well, this is like I, you know, I come down here and I kind of like, well, what can I do as the MP? Well, this is I can highlight something, but what what can we do as collective city on well, this issue? I think it, it, it comes back to community mindedness, and I know that's a very broad term, but when I look just over my left shoulder here, when you walk up here and you see a bunch of kids playing in a lit, uh, nice green space over there, yeah, that warms cool. my heart. I, and I, I was born and bred in the West. Yes. And I was born and bred not too far from here. We look across the street. I know Knox United Church. I know that uh, that nursing home right beside yeah. it. My grandmother lived her final days there. And this has always been. This has always been a safe area as far as I'm concerned yeah. growing up. And I think that, uh, to your point, I think that whether it be in areas like Central Park or other areas that are challenged in our city, we have to, again, I'm going to go back and say to you, we have to put our heads together to see what we can do to make it thrive. Because mm. I believe that we can do that. And, and uh, the police, they work hard. They, they work hard to keep our community safe. Um, they, they work hard around the clock. And unfortunately, going back a few weeks, this, this area was in the media for the wrong reasons because there was more than one incident with, with no, respect. No, multiple. I yeah. actually had a, I was talking to someone yeah. actually who was sitting here, uh, a lady with her yeah. family, and she was yeah. telling me 19. In a, in a, in a two-week space or something yeah. like that, 19 yeah. and that's, that's, that's too many. That's, that's 19 more than what there should be, right? Yeah. So, so I, just think, I just think that if we, uh, there's a number of issues, a number of things that you and I have talked about here tonight, but I think that need the same approach. And I know you can only talk around a boardroom table for so long, but as long as we're talking, if we're listening, those that experience it, even those that live in the community, listen to them, uh, whether it be in this community or, or others, uh, we live in a great city, we live in a great province, and we live in a wonderful country. And I think people that live here, they, they have a right to be safe. But there's challenges around that right yeah. now, so let's tackle them together. Now, because uh, I, I probably, uh, <laughs> you want to go and you've talked a no, lot. No, this is, this is great. No, I'm enjoying um, it. You know, the Prime Minister is actually, you know, I've you know, asked the Prime Minister to come to Winnipeg. He's going to come. It's always welcome. On the 11th of September. If you had to talk to him, like what would you try and impress upon him as being the greatest need for not only for your organization but for our city? Yeah. You know, I know he talks a lot about the middle class and jobs and jobs and creating mm -hmm. jobs, protecting the environment, working yeah. with indigenous peoples. You know, the list goes on. Yeah. But if if we actually had him here and we could actually explain to him what what the needs of our Winnipeg Center mm -hmm. and of then the greater donut, mm -hmm. uh, what would we what would we tell him? Well, what I would go, you tell him? I, I go back to homelessness now that I'm becoming more familiar with uh, some of the issues and challenges around homelessness, and we've talked about them. We've talked about addictions. We've talked about uh, mental uh, mental health. Uh, we've talked about relationship follow-up and some of the initiatives that have been put forward. And I'll use an example around the national housing strategy. Uh, some of the other recommendations that have been put forward provincially with respect to mental health, those types of things. I would say, I would say to all those that are in the various levels of government, if the Prime Minister stood in front of us right now, I'd say, I think now it's time to act. And now it's time to act. Let's let's uh, let's look at some of the plans that have been laid out. Uh, agencies like, if I may, like Siloam and others that are paying very close attention to this. I think it's time that if we need housing, let's build it. If it's buildings around here that need to be restored, let's restore them. Uh, there's plenty of them. If we went for a walk around here tonight, and you know, let's say a couple of mile radius, we would find properties not just in this area that we identify as the core, but in other areas of our city and province. So I really believe that we could make inroads within within the challenges of, of hardship that lead to homelessness. Uh, the other one is youth. Uh, the other one is youth. When, when we see, and I can speak only for the province of Manitoba, when we see the number of kids that are in care, and I know there's tremendous effort put forward by all involved within those that uh, uh, at Siloam we deal with uh, young people that fall out of the system uh, when they when they age out. So we have an exit up program, and we see some of the benefits that can be had by giving young people a chance, teaching them some skills, teaching them to get back in the workplace, that whole dignity piece. So I would say uh, I'm a big believer in relationships. I'm a big believer in putting people around the table collectively, whether they be in, in government office, whether they be an agency office, whether they be people that live it on a day-to-day -day basis. That's how we're going to get somewhere. Some of the programs are in place, in theory. Yeah, yeah. I think it's now time. I think it's time to roll them out. Yeah, so yeah. I would well, say we have committed to a 50% reduction okay. of chronic homelessness in the federal government. Yep. You know, and I think they calculate 25,000 homeless across the country. Yeah. I was just in Vancouver recently. They yeah. said they had 2,000 homeless. Yeah. We have 1,500, so, okay. which is kind of an enorm enormous number compared to our population size. And I don't think people have actually 
you know, they, they, I think they understand a bit in Ottawa, but I don't think they understand enough See, of the I challenges that we face yes. collectively here in Winnipeg. And I commend the goal when you talk about 50%. So here's what I would say, whether it be the Prime Minister or anybody else standing here, I'd say, let's hold ourselves accountable to that number. If that's what you put out there, and when I say we, it's more than just the people that sit in government office. It's those of us that all have a hand in this, on the ground, the hands and feet in the community. Let's see where we are in a year versus that 50% number. Yeah. Where are we in two years? And if we're going this way, then we're doing something right. If we're doing this, then obviously something isn't quite working. <laughs> so, but so let's just, I think accountability is a big part of it. Uh, I, I think we, uh, I'll go back and say it again. I think we live in a fabulous country. We have the ability to, uh, some of these challenges are big. Some of the mountains are steeper yeah. than others. I just, uh, I, I'm excited about the opportunity to work collectively to see what we can do around some of these issues. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jim. I really thank appreciate you, you coming out. That's, uh, thank you. And uh, as you know, it's a beautiful Winnipeg uh, early September evening. It is. May there it's... be many more of them here at Central Park. And, <laughs> well, at least maybe uh, 30 days in September. Is it 30 or 30? There's what? 30, but I said to somebody today, I hope we can get 60 more days out of this because <laughs> the older I get and the more gray hair I get on my an head. Indi an indigenous uh, summer. Uh, I, that's what it is. So let's look forward to that and let's enjoy it together. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough week. Well, oh, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, well, it's still Facebook Live, so whatever you say, it's still recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think the camera's off, it's not. <laughs> no, this was good. I, I had a, when I, like I said, when I got out of the car tonight, I had an immediate good impression. I saw, you know, given what's been in the media the last couple of years, I just think this is excellent. It's fairly consistent. And they should be seen, you know, and, and, and you know, Central Park, yeah, maybe. Maybe this has gotten the headlines, but it just happened to be Central Park. Yeah. Other areas of the city, nobody's, nobody's in it. No. It happens all over the place. Yeah. Often happens in a house and no one talks about it. Well, yeah, that's right. That's, that's a good point. Um, I don't know. We're off. I had sent you with We're not off. It's still on. Oh, it's the mouse. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you see a mouse? Yeah, I know. I saw the text. I was just outside of the country. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to come. Yeah. I'd love to come. I'd love to come. I would love to come. I would love to come. I would love to come. Yeah. Oh, the battery is dead. Oh, yeah.
Find this on your website? Because yes, there's... it should be on Facebook right now, actually. Okay. So for I get my communication guy to look at it. Luck is a good day, yeah. yeah. Well, I know you got stuff to do. Well, how you doing? Good. I live right here. Oh, cool. So I, I heard... pop in to blow up my air mattress. I heard, I heard your drum. <laughs> I, mean, I was trying to, I have some electricity, but the, the cord doesn't run. I guess the uh, electric here don't work. Ooh. What do you guys have to the house? Orange juice. Uh, ah! Oh, open. Okay. Uh, okay. just doing and asking for forgiveness afterwards. <laughs> so if someone's got a kid extension, if I can run an extension cord, where's your apartment in here? Uh, of course. Too high up. Yeah. Well, it might pop Whoa, up. Is there anything oh, wait, on the wait, outside wait, of the building? Um, right here, there's a... Uh, This is Turkish, from Turkey, and he say, come, he say, near the restaurant, and he say, come to my restaurant, he said, I give you food, and uh, and uh, yeah, and, uh, seven, five, seven, and when he was, his wife was over here, and he was in Turkey, and his wife said, well, she wanted her husband with him, so, uh, they saw Robert, and Robert, about the world consulate in Turkey and the government got him. Now I open myself, uh, my set, my, uh, my restaurant. Now I need this come to fly my food. Yeah. And this is Robert's woman. Every time. That's not one day. This is Every Robert's time. woman, Emily, right? Emily. Really? Yeah. Oh, I not wait for that. It's friends. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he just he just came. He just came here now. Seven days. Seven days. Yeah, he doesn't speak English. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's my brother, uh, my wife's brother. He doesn't speak English. Seven days ago. He say I don't know. I don't know English. I don't know. Thank you so much. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Hey, what is the robot? Is is uh, is it? I think he's in the TP. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. He's somewhere. Oh, yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey! 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 Hey!
put this here. I put this here. Okay. Yes, I will. I'm running city council of this area. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, Yeah, it's a food here. Family name. Okay, but that's not Yeah. Yeah, it's like a superior something like that. Okay. Superior? Yeah. Oh, okay. Looks like you're going to have food all night long, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be eating all night. <laughs> 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 oh, next door. Did you see? Did you see? Oh, okay. Did you see the? Thank <laughs> you. 